I'm Maxwell Palmer. I'm an associate professor of political science. And I'm gonna be talking about voter files, which are one of my favorite sources of data and a really important type of data that we use to study ballot access and voting rights and play a really important role in both academic research and a lot of legal research and court cases around uh, voting laws. Voter files are public record in the United States. And what that means is that every state keeps a list of every single registered voter, their name, their address, uh, some basic demographic information, um, as well as their voter history. So who you vote for is always private. Nobody sees your ballot. But the fact that you voted is always public. So these voter files maintain lists of every time you vote. And sometimes if you voted absentee or by mail or early, going back pretty much till uh, at least the 2000s, sometimes before, depending on the state. So here, for example, is just a map of the city of Boston showing the voters by address and by estimated race from the 2000 election. We can see um, you know, roughly where every voter lives and their backgrounds, and there's tons of other variables we can plot like this as well. But what's really cool about voter files is there are huge data sets, they're kept up to date by state governments, and they link individual level data with geographic data. So we can do all sorts of different analyses exploiting geography and individual non-anonymized records. We actually have names and addresses for everybody. So as one example of one way we can use voter files, is this is from a recent paper I did with Justin Davidicus Kessner, a recent uh, BU professor uh, who's at the Kennedy School. We looked at how having access to a car affects voter turnout. And so we were able to match the Michigan voter file, the full list of all 6 million plus voters in Michigan to the Michigan car registration database, which we got as part of a voting rights case we were working on to actually look at the individual level. How does having access to a car, somebody in your, at your residence owning a car affect your ability to vote? And what's really interesting, and this is from 2018, is that there's a really big effect on owning a car or having access to a car on election day voting, on going to your polling place to vote. But there's no effect whatsoever on absentee voting. And this highlights the importance of lots of different ways to vote. If we want to increase voter turnout and increase ballot access for everyone, methods to vote like absentee voting or voting by mail are really, really important because they reduce disparities in who can turn out. And we're able to look at this not just across the state, but use the voter file to narrow in within apartment buildings. So we're actually comparing people who live in the exact same apartment buildings who have access to cars to those who don't. So these are people who are really, really similar to their neighbors. But there's a really big racial gap in who has access to a car. And black voters in Michigan have much lower access to vehicles than white voters um, or voters of other racial and ethnic groups. And this lack of access actually drives the racial turnout gap and makes it bigger. Well, all well, we see a huge effect of car ownership for all racial groups in increasing voter turnout, um, it actually increases turnout for white voters the most. If we switched to some sort of universal vote by mail system or gave everybody the option to more easily vote by mail, we'd see smaller racial differences in voter turnout as a result. And so I wanna highlight the use of voter files in lots of other contexts. And this is now a new resource that we have access to at BU. So this summer, uh, the Center for Anti-Racist Research received a grant that helped us purchase a three-year subscription to uh, data from L2, which is a commercial voter file vendor that provides data to campaigns across the country. And so we have data here now available to the entire BU community, faculty, staff, graduate, undergraduate students, everybody, with more than 208 million voters and more than 2.3 billion vote history records, going back at least 10 years and often more. And this includes geocoded addresses. So we know where people live. We can do all sorts of analyses about proximity to polling places or to our neighbors, uh, as well as commercial data, like um, estimates of income and education and religion and tons of other variables as well. So this is all now public on the BU CAS server. Um, and we'll be sending out more information about accessing it in the next couple of weeks as well and providing the smaller data sets. But I encourage you to take a look. It's a great way to get individual level data that you can use not just for analyses of voting and elections, but tons of other applications where you want really clear micro-level data. Thank you.